What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be running through 10 of the rarest mounts in World of Warcraft that are still obtainable. So they're still in the game in some way, shape or form, whether it's through a difficult grind or an event or a really low drop chance, they're still in the game and haven't been removed yet. Now I did set a few rules, I didn't include any TCG or promotion mounts as I felt like they were an external source and not directly from World of Warcraft. I also didn't include any Battle for Azeroth mounts because I feel like the expansion is still too new and skews too much with the data. And finally, the way this list has been populated is through not only how they're obtained, but also how rare they are and also how much of the player base has them. The first mount up on our list is going to be the Big Love Rocket and this is quite an iconic rare mount as it's only available during the Love is in the Air festival which is for two weeks once a year. So that comes around in February and you'll have a two week window of trying to get the mount. Now that comes from the heart shaped boxes which is awarded from doing the festival dungeon. You do that you can do it once per character per day so you have a really small window and a few chances at getting the mount. While the mount isn't on an insane drop chance just how limited you are at having opportunities of getting the mount is what makes it quite rare and sought after. The next mount on our list is the Cobalt Primordial Diahorn. While the mount itself doesn't look that great, it is quite rare in terms of the drop chance and also the amount of players that have the mount. And this mount comes from Undosta, which was a rare boss, or a world boss I should say, in Mr. Pandaria. It was added a little bit later on. And you can have multiple attempts at getting this mount through various different characters. You can do it once per week per character. You can also use a Mogu Rune of Fate to give you an extra chance of getting this mount. So you can have quite a few chances, but I've seen people have thousands and thousands of attempts at trying to get the mount and they still haven't seen it. The next mount up on this list is technically removed, but it's still available in the game, and that is the Plagued Proto Drake. So it originally came from the Naxxramas Glory of the Raider achievement series, where you've completed a bunch of achievements, and you would either get the Black or the Plagued Proto Drake, depending on the raid size you did it on. But that was removed, but the Plagued Proto Drake was brought back as a Black Market Auction House exclusive item. So it appears on the Black Market Auction House every once in a while, and you can throw down a lot of gold to obtain it, but you need a lot of gold. It goes for millions and generally the gold cap. So if you want this mount, you better start saving gold now because you're going to need a lot of gold to get it. You also need to be a little bit lucky in the sense of when it goes onto the auction house, you need to be one of the first people to put the bid on to hit gold cap so that no one else can outbid you on it. The Ivory Hawk Strider is the next mount on our list and it's a little bit different from the rest because it isn't an insane drop chance or it isn't going to cost you millions of gold, but it is behind a hidden reputation and the grind to get the rep up is a, a little annoying to some, so it does put quite a few people off and others don't know it existed, so it, it does make it quite a rare mount. It doesn't look that great, but you, if you are after a mount that not a lot of people have, then this is one to definitely go for. So to get this mount, you will need to be exalted with the Talon's Vengeance, which is a faction in Legion. It is hidden, as I mentioned, and to start gaining reputation with the faction, you'll first of all need to obtain one of four pets. These pets come from the culling of the Diabete quests, or the world quests that are found in Legion. They spawn on the coasts of the various different zones, so look in Azuna, look in High Mountain, look in Stormheim, and you'll find a quest right on the coast that is to, to cull the Diabeeks. When you go out there, you'll find a Diabeak Matrion, and when you kill her, one of her babies will be in the zone somewhere, in the area somewhere, that you can give food to, and then that will become your pet that you can start leveling up, essentially, in quest, and turn it into a mount. So, there's the four different Diabeaks. There's the Diabeak, there's the Snow Feather, the Blood Gazer, and the Sharp Talon. You'll need Pudgeon, Vicul, Gamma, uh, Gamma Lost. You'll need Smoked Elder Horn, you'll need Azunian Grapes or Dried Bilberry. All of those items can be found in Dalaran, in the Legion Dalaran. Just speak to the various vendors that sell things like the cheese vendor or the barmaids and you'll be able to buy those items. You'll need them on your inventory to get one of the, the pets. Each one has a different requirement behind it, so just get all four and then you'll, you'll have all the different foods that you need. And then you'll need to find the pet in the area. It'll spawn quite a little bit away from the Matreon, so you'll need to have a look around. And when you find it, you can speak to it. It'll allow you to give it the food, and then it'll become your pet. When you summon the pet, you'll be able to go through about 15 quests. And when you've done all the quests, there'll be various things such as do world, as certain world bosses or raid bosses or PvP. 
various different things that you'll need to do for the pet. Once you've gone through all of its quests, it'll turn into a mount. And once it's a mount, you'll be able to head over to Aviana in the Sal Salvan Falls in High Mountain. Probably butchered that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, head there and you'll be able to start gaining reputation. You'll get an Ivory Talon which lets you kill players for reputation. It will turn you into kind of a neutral faction, so you can be attacked by anyone, but you'll start gaining reputation from kills. And when you hit Honored, you can get an Ivory Feather, which allows you to do this, a similar thing in Battlegrounds as well and continue gaining reputation. Once you've finally hit Exalted, you'll be able to go and get the mount and you'll have yourself the Ivory Hawk Strider. While quite ugly, it is a rare mount, and that is the Shackled Urzel mount, which comes from Mythic Argus. It's a really weird looking mount. Some people like it, it kind of creeps me out a bit, but that's that was that's what makes it unique. Like it's one of those mounts that you kind of ride on, it gives a little bit of a, a shock value. So it's quite cool in that regard. So to get this mount, you will need to kill Mythic Argus, and you'll have a chance once per week per character to get it. It is quite a low drop chance, that's why it's on this list. And Mythic Argus isn't the easiest thing to go and do. You'll need to get a group and go through the raid. Hopefully someone has a skip. But I'd recommend just using the group finder tool to try and get your groups each week so you can get your chance at the mount. There's no bonus rolls or anything that you can use to have an extra chance. So just go in and kill it and good luck. Son of Galleon is the mount next up on our list and it comes from another Mr. Pandaria world boss. It's going to come from Galleon which is found in the Valley of the Four Winds. You can go out there, kill Galleon, the Galleon very easily on a 120 character and it spawns every 15 minutes and you will have an additional chance of getting the mount from Elder Charms of Good Fortune. So make sure you have some Elder Charms. You can only do it once per week per character and you can only use one charm per week per character but it will give you essentially two chances per character per week of getting the Son of Galleon. It isn't a bad looking mount, but it isn't that great either, but it is quite rare. The next mount up on our list is going to be the Solar Spire Hawk, and I think this is a quite a nice looking mount. I think it's quite cool and unique. I, I do quite like the, the visuals on it. It does remind me a little bit of the Pure Blood Fire Hawk, but a bit more metally glassy looking. And this is going to come from another world boss, which is in Warlords of Draenor. If you head over to the Spire of Iraq, you'll find Rukmar there. Sometimes it's flying around, but generally it'll die the second it spawns. It's on about a 15 minute respawn timer. Kill it. You can roughly see where it spawns in the video. Give it a kill and you'll have a chance of getting the mount once per week. There's no bonus rolls or anything you can do to have an additional chance. So you're only going to have one chance per character per week at getting this mount. The Cobalt Cloud Serpent is the next one on our list, and it looks okay for a Cloud Serpent. It's definitely one of the more okay looking Cloud Serpents. Nothing crazy, but it definitely doesn't look bad. And this is going to come from Nalak in the Isle of Thunder, which is another Mr. Pandaria world boss. So you're going to be able to head out to the Isle of Thunder, give it a kill once again on about a 15 minute respawn timer, and you'll have a chance of getting the mount. This one does work with bonus rolls, so you can go and get yourself a Mogu Rune of Fate, which will give you an additional chance of getting the mount each week per character. So per character, you could have two chances of getting the mount per week. It's an okay looking mount and one that people have thousands of kills on once again to try and get. Nearly coming to the end of our list now, we have the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent. And this is a mount that is heavily sought after by a lot of players. It looks great. It's one of my favorite Cloud Serpent mounts. And this is going to come from the Shower of Anger, which is another Mr. Pandaria world boss. And I've seen people have thousands and thousands of kills on this and never seen it, but it looks great. I think it's worth the effort. The Shower of Anger will spawn in the same spot every single time. It's on about a 15 minute respawn timer. And once again, you can use a coin to have an additional chance. This one will use Elder Charms of Good Fortune. So make sure you have some of those so you can have two chances per character per week at getting this mount. And this one is worth the camp because it looks really good. I do definitely like the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent. The final mount on our list is going to be the Fellblaze Infernal mount. And this looks great. It's quite a unique mount that was added in Legion. You're basically riding on an Infernal, which is a cool concept. It looks good. But the downside is it's pretty rare to the point that players were running this on normal and thought it had been removed from the game because they just hadn't seen or had anyone report a drop for so long. So this comes from Gul'dan in the Nighthold, which is a Legion raid. You can do that on normal, heroic and mythic 
to get a chance of getting them out. So you have three chances per character per week, but it is on an insanely low drop chance. So you're going to be doing this for quite a while before you get yours, unless you get extremely lucky. But definitely a cool mount. It's a nice ground mount to add to your collection. And it's worth going after, especially on Mythic difficulty, because you're going to have a chance of getting an additional mount on Mythic as well. So it's worth the grind there if you definitely have to have to fill in your mount collection. Now, a few mounts didn't make this list, and I wanted to throw out a few honorable mentions to the mounts that didn't. The first one's up are the Vicious Saddle mounts. These come from doing PvP, and currently in BFA, if you get to a certain rating and do PvP content, you'll be awarded with a progression bar. Once the progression bar is filled, you'll get the current season Vicious mount. And then every, any progress after that will go towards getting a Vicious Saddle, which you can go and hand in for any of the older Vicious Saddle mounts. Now, that's fairly new and only came with Season 2, so prior to that you couldn't get any additional Vicious Saddles, which made these mounts a lot less common because it was only to people who did PvP quite a lot that got them. Um, I feel like we're going to start seeing a lot more people with these mounts though, now that you can grind out the Vicious Saddles and obtain the Vicious mounts again. That's one of the reasons I didn't include them on the list. The next mount up is going to be the prestigious Midnight Corsa, another PvP based mount, and while it's not that difficult to obtain in theory, you need to get an insane amount of PvP content done, and you need to reach a very high honor level. Once you reach that honor level, you'll be awarded with the prestigious Midnight Corsa, which is one of the more rare mounts in the game. So if you're after that mount, you want a really, really rare one, that you can grind your head off in PvP until you reach the required honor level. So that is all the mounts on our list coming to a close now. Hopefully this video was interesting to you and hopefully you have some mounts now that are in your eyes that you want to target and try and get. And yeah, if you like this kind of content, then I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe as I post three videos a week on various World of Warcraft content, guides, information and news. So definitely follow me if you're interested in seeing more stuff from me. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.